Hello and welcome to Complete Games with me James and this is your single player settings guide to Ark Survival Evolved. So who's this guide for? Well obviously for those who want to play single player without ridiculous settings I'm going to show you some of the things that I would suggest changing to make this either easy, hard, medium, whatever you want. This settings guide is a complete guide to the settings that I am running on my complete series on my channel. I'm playing Ark Survival Evolved, I'm not using any mods, we're playing on PC. And my intention for my playthrough, my complete playthrough, is to play through on a single player. We want to complete all of the caves, that's all 10 of the caves, get all 10 of the artifacts. We're going to have to fight 3 of the bosses multiple times on a few different levels. I also want to be able to get to level 100 by the time we get to the Overseer and we're going to have to do some dino taming. Uh, I'm going to skip over some of the co-op options because really let's face it if you're going to play Ark with a friend you're going to have to wait for that friend to be online when you come online and it's a lot of messing about you really want to get a dedicated server. I just suggest you know searching around on the forum forums, steam forums and various various places um, for a good server to play on and I will announce now um, I have plans for this channel I'm playing this game quite a bit if anybody's going to be expressing interest later on in my series in joining the server then I'm going to be happy to set a server up for my subscribers and anyone who's following the channel we can all get in and have a bash on that on another day but this video is about setting up for a single player game all of my ramblings about what the settings do and what we skip over just go to the end of the video and I'm gonna put up a page of all the settings that I tweaked if I were you I would stick around for everything that I've got to say uh, about the settings and, and what we're changing because um, the developers haven't made things easy they really haven't it's um, lazy programming if you ask me but at the same time there are options they have given you the options to be able to tweak this game in any way you desire so for as much bitching and moaning as we could be doing about the settings um it, it is it is make it, you can make this into a solo game and a good solo game i'm going to prove that to you i'm going to prove that right now so let's jump into it here okay okay so here we are in general settings um i've just reset everything to defaults and um immediately off the bat we want to put difficulty level up to the maximum of 1.0 now what this does is this will make dinosaurs spawn at 150 on most maps scorched earth going forward and extinction they'll go 150 there has been patches on xboxes and playstation to get rid uh, to, to bring this up as well so i believe you guys can now play with 158 dinos <clears throat> back in the day we used to have to change a little bit of code for the PC gamers in this um, and just change a, a file name at the top just to be able to make it go up to 150 in a single player setting um, but you could do it at 150 on servers again guys remember remember this game was meant for multiplayer it wasn't meant for single players so but I think it, it, it's got there now so we're gonna put this up to 1.0 um, um, we're going to leave dino damage, player damage, all of this stuff, we're leaving that alone until we get to the XP multiplayer. We are going to change this to 2.0. Double the amount of XP that we get. Having experimented with this, I think it was a good balance in the first 30 levels of gaining experience. Um, and it starts to slow down after that. Now. If like me, you're going for a single player game and you eventually you want to complete, you want to take all your divine dinos and you want to defeat the overseer, you need to be level 100 to do that. It's it levels you can level up past 100 to 120 now, is it since Scorched Earth, Aberration Extinction, all of that onwards? But um, you do need to be 100 to be able to face the overseer, and um, we want to balance it. But there's a lot of stuff between getting to the end game and um uh, and defeating the overseer you've got what 10 caves to get 10 artifacts you've got to fight three bosses multiple times and you're probably gonna have to get multiple artifacts as well to do it to get the tech gear to get there so you've got plenty of time on times two multiplier to get to that level 100 at a really good steady rate and you don't need to be changing any more of the XP multipliers in advance. But there is one you can tweak if you want. We'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. 
Uh, taming speed for myself. Okay. Um, it only goes up to 0.3. I'm going to change it from my playthrough to 0.80. I don't want my dinosaurs to instantly get up and be tamed, but at the same time, I don't want to be waiting around half an hour for it to do so for my playthrough reasons. You guys play around with this sitting how you will. I think if you put it up any higher than that, you're pretty much, you know, you, you if you put it up too high, you can have an instant tame. You don't really want that. Not on... Okay, so things that are low level are going to tame at a reasonably fast um, speed, but, you know, the high level stuff that we're going to have to guard and sit around and we don't, you know, we want to give kibble and, and give time to. These guys are still going to take a bit of time in single player to do. So, times 8 speed we're going for then. Okay, moving on. The next setting under general we're going to change is harvesting amount. We're going to change this and we're going to double it to times 2. Now, playing around with your harvesting settings, you will find that you don't want to find that using a stone hatchet gets you three or four hundred wood from one tree. You don't want to play around with these settings too much so that your dino's getting overburdened before he's even punched one tree in. By doubling the amount that we get from one one tree, we're we're talking rather than getting forty pieces of wood from a um a fat uh, from a stone pick, we're gonna get eighty pieces of wood, which is enough to do one one foundation. And because we're on single player, we, we don't log out, these things don't respawn around us, so doubling the amount, I think, is, is a fair thing to do. You know, so, yeah, harvest amount, we're going to put on at 2.0, guys, uh, leave it there, I think that one's, that one's good for that, that's what I'm doing on my playthrough. Let's carry on going down here, players, stamina drain, we are going to leave all at the same, again, the damage we do to harvest an amount leave it all leave all of that okay um we'll allow third person camera on in my playthrough um the global chat anything that's got to do with a multiplayer session i'm going to say right off now um we're just going to forget about if you guys are going to play with some mates go on a server and do it um because it's much better experience you don't have the tethering distances and that um so I've, I've, I would recommend going on the server, um, but they're pretty self-explanatory. You, you really want to set your tether distance to as maximum as possible. Enabling the crosshair. Uh, I'm going to take this off, right? And I suggest you guys do too, because there are things in the game, like the scope on the sniper rifle or the compound bow that give you a target. And I feel like you kind of break in a little bit of the immersion here if you have a great big green cross in the middle telling you where to hit. Um, it kind of takes a little bit away and a little bit of skill out of it. So I myself, I'm leaving it off up to you if you turn it on, but I'd personally prefer it off. Um, I am, however, going to sh turn on pl um, player location. Myself, I'm pretty confident that I know the island very well and I've played it long enough without um, being on the map to know roughly whereabouts I die uh, or where I am. So I don't really need it. However, for my playthrough, um, I want to be able to point out to you guys whereabouts I am on the map when I'm in caves or whereabouts I've set up bases on the maps. So sort of to pinpoint things on the map, I'm going to leave it on for myself. But I recommend, especially if you're brand new to the game, turn it off. It's, it's much more fun. You learn your way around. When you get the compass, you learn to navigate and it really does make you a better player and it makes the game a lot more immersive. So my advice, leave it off. But I'm leaving it on for my playthrough. Um, definitely, you know, much, much more satisfying doing that way. Maximum difficulty. Now it says here, forces the max dinosaur to 150 regardless of map. That goes back to the island and the bug. I do believe by the time Scorched Earth came out, um, Xbox, PlayStation, you could all have the 150s um, dinos, but there's something about the island map and some of the mods that were based on the island that would only bring you out max level at 120. By hitting maximum difficulty, um, it it makes sure everything is 150, just like the first um, setting at, at the top here, this difficulty. So that plays an effect with the other maps. Going forward, this works, but backwards with the island and stuff this needed to be 
needs to be added and it and it's pretty much I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same code that we used to have to enter back in the day that just pretty much does that anyway so that's to my knowledge correct me if I'm wrong that's what that's going to be doing and um, that is why we allow um, maximum difficulty level now also if you guys want to make this an easier playthrough I would still suggest that you tick this you still want the 150 dinos even if you want easy playthrough yeah because there's some other things you can do to make the game easier um, without breaking the game in a different way further on in the advanced menu and I will get to that okay um, this is the important one and this is the one where you can go around the whole internet trying to figure out what do the single player settings do what numbers do they change exactly I'm not going to delve deep into it because it is it does change a few things but we need this to be ticked and the advanced menu is going to make a major difference to our baby um, mature speed and the intervals that we do it at so we need to have these single player settings enabled now so use that enable that um, use corpse locator I always pretty much had death helper on I, I think it's gone now really but um, the thing is, if you're playing without a compass and you haven't got your GPS, um, you know where you died. You know the area where you died, but after a little bit of time, your body might get eaten straight away, and then you're just looking for a bag on the floor, and then it becomes really hard. So I find just having that beam of the light come out, it gives you that last little bit of, yeah, I don't know, what, say 50 yards away, you can see where your bag is. You're still going to have to deal with any dinos around your dead body and that. It's just, I, I would have it ticked. Um, I don't think even if you're looking for a maximum level difficulty thing, I, you, it doesn't break it by having it. It doesn't pinpoint it on your map, so you can't see where your body is on your. It's it just use the corpse locator. It sort of pinpoints you down a bit better. Yeah, doesn't break the game. Okay, uh, okay. Disable structure placement collision. We will have this. Um, so. <clears throat> We've got no clipping issues with our structures and stuff. That's all good. Allow multiple platform floors. We're going to have that on. And we are also going to have unlimited respects. Do bear in mind that if you start a game without this ticked and you get your character up to, say, level 100 and you figure you haven't got any engrams left, well, you're only going to be allowed to respec once. And it doesn't matter if you tick this again in the future, you ain't going to be able to do it. So... If you're playing on solo, you aren't, you're not going to be able to learn all the ingrams. Certainly if you're playing solo and you're going to use that character going forward on Scorched Earth, Aberration, there's different ingrams you've got to learn. You can't learn every single sad saddle. So you, you're basically kind of gimping yourself into what lucky drops you can get then. Personally, just give yourself respects. It's a good setting to be there on a community based server where people are working together and some people can say oh can you make me a, a t-rex saddle and somebody learns the spino saddle so you're mixing up your ingrams it it kind of works and it makes a little bit more of a team play but we're doing solo settings so solo we allow unlimited respects <clears throat> um the last three disabled dino taming all of that we are going to um leave as is we want to ride our dinos and all of that stuff <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, advanced rules. Okay, so player versus environment timer. We're going to leave this. Um, these are multiple multiplayer settings. Again, tribe alliances doesn't really matter to me because nobody's going to be joining my game. And like I say, if they're joining yours, you know they should be. Um, yeah, just go, just get a server. Trust me. And then if you get a server, you're not even looking at this menu. You're going to be looking at your host server menu. You're going to make adjustments there not within the arc menu um, okay disable PVE and ga gamma now um, if you have this ticked and you know you should really if you if you're playing as a single player game because a lot of the game at night the atmosphere of the game um, it is so much better and it breaks things in, in the game you you can't use the night vision goggles perhaps the as it says there but it's the torches as well and you know i remember one of my first experiences i, I built a um a little house base thing in the middle of the woods and me and my friends 
we had a load of raptors and a carno come in at night and we couldn't see anything and ah oh, it was scary it was brilliant really was good not being able to see and not not knowing where people are coming from really adds to an atmosphere and when you shine that torch in the jungle it's it looks great you know it really really does look great um but for my purposes um you guys by the time i record the video and i edit the footage even after in editing if i try and add brightness and contrast i can't bring up a black screen anymore and you guys are just looking at black screen so i need to be able to gamma up and down um for the day and night cycle for the purposes of doing a youtube playthrough if you are looking at these settings and you're planning to do the same thing as myself and doing a single player game and and you can plan to record it well you you are going to want to tweak the day and night cycles a little bit and the gamma i think as well because otherwise your viewers are just going to be looking at black screen um so that's why we're doing that we're not allowing that okay um cave building i am going to check again we're going to be solo and there's one cave in particular the ice cave that i'm thinking of i'm going to need to a build some sort of structure keep one we're gonna i'm gonna need some stuff set up there in order to compete that ice cave and i'm gonna need to be able to build in there to do it i may even have to breed in there depending on the gap i don't know i'm gonna I'm, there's some things i'm worried about my playthrough when i get there but when i get there i want to be able to build in there so i'm gonna allow that um allow carrying dinos definitely i want that in uh player environment okay I'm going to be able to drop some things in the taming pen and taming quicker, but it's just getting around the map. I don't, I don't want to be gimped. It kind of makes my flyers a little bit more useless then if I can't pick up some other dinos. And anyway, I don't know. Yeah, but we're just going to let, I'm just going to do it. Okay, so obviously structure prevention. This, um, I'm going to leave this off. I'll build wherever I want and um i am likely to go and build near the mines and i'm probably going to have to build something at the volcano for the tech volcano right at the very end so i'm going to need um yeah i'm going to need stuff all around map so i'm going to build right next to the mines and it's my map anyway it's my island so i'm leaving that there i want to be able to build wherever i want to build yeah, diseases all of this stuff we are leaving on Okay, so override structural platform prevention. Um, I am going to tick these for my particular playthrough. Um, there's something that I was thinking about. Um, if I uh, my current playthrough is on the island, but if I get to scorched earth, there's something I was thinking about trying to design to get farm within milk and things. Anyway, um, I want to be able to have that, and I want to be able to build that sort of stuff on my sal saddle. So I'm going to have that overridden. So now we're going to get to the important bit about the imprinting and possibly why a few of you have checked out what's what's going on because this is where things get a little bit more complicated. The first two settings that really are going to make a difference and you, you guys are going to need to copy is the baby mature speed. Um, we are going to put this down to 0.815. Okay, so this number, um, with combined of the single use player settings under general and added to this number 0 0.815, this gives us a baby mature speed um, of around 30 times higher than on official. So given that it would take somewhere like 18 hours for a rex to um mature uh by inputting this number we're reducing that one down to just over a half hour but this is where we want to apply the cuddle um multiplier to also equal out and balance that number that we've entered in with the mature speed and we need a number of 0 0.2 which will equal it out now it's not going to equal it out for every dinosaur some of the low tame things that you wouldn't bother imprinting are probably going to you know not going to get the cuddle or the mutation that um they're, they're not going to get the the cuddle multiplier right but for most of our essential attacking dinosaurs this should give us a hundred percent imprint on our our dinosaurs if you get all your cuddles and you walk walk in right at not a ridiculous time of 18 hours whatnot um so 
the egg laying interval you can put that down right down to one i also think i don't see why an animal shouldn't be ready to mate straight away especially as we can't log out so you can take that all the way down um uh yeah just increase time so we can we can lay that lay that down we probably won't we don't need it as high as as that we lower it, lower it right down these ones can be adjusted egg hatch speed you can have it pretty much go out at instant on these three you can play around with these numbers for egg laying and mating and all of that that's that's all of it but the number that you need to get right and the number that you know we all struggle to find that magic number is the mature speed and the cuddle interval multiplier this makes it this kind of corrects it guys so these are the, these are the numbers that you do you want and by all means play around leave it at default actually i think the default settings of 1.0 for all of these are fine well perhaps not the mating interval leave, leave that alone so they can carry on mate but hatch speed and interval lag and you know, they're they're set to 1.0 that's fine as we've already got the times 30 uh, we've already got the multiplier of single player that's that's fine that's all okay so they're the ones that you want to be changing um the poop interval thing uh be careful with that setting you might end up having dinosaurs just crapping all over the place but if you was to change it say you're playing on extinction and the owls the snow owls they do drop the pellets so i can imagine that you might want to play around with the poop interval but we're just going to leave it as it is because otherwise we're just going to end up with a mess literally so we're going to leave the rest of these things here until we get down to day and night speed. Now I am going to change my night speed and I'm going to have it three times quicker than the day speed. Um, I basically want to be my, my playthrough again, obviously it's going to be on YouTube. I want to, I want to have more daytime footage than nighttime footage because I'm probably going to be gammering for a little bit of the nighttime footage anyway. Um, but for you guys, I would suggest just leaving it really um the night time can be just as fun as the daytime i've had some great fun playing at night um so you know leave it as is and all of this stuff can all be left alone until we get to crop growth speed these we want to change to five for growth speed and five for decay now let's put this scenario you're on a server you plant all your crops in your greenhouse, you go out, you go to the pub with your mates, you have a few pints, come home, go to bed, get up the next day, hey, all your crops are grown. Single player scenario, you come back and you your crops haven't grown anymore, have they? Because the game's, you know, not been running. So, you know, we need to correct that for single player values and um, growth speed of five and decay speed of five, you know, does help with that. And... I mean, let's face it, once you've got your greenhouse up and running, after a couple of days, really, in the multiplayer game, <clears throat> the crop growth speed, it, it kind of, unless somebody's not tending to the fertilizer, unless somebody's not putting it in, you know, it really makes not not a lot of difference. And then once you've got an electric fridge and you can put your veggies in there, keeping you stacked up, as long as you're playing, it's not really much to keep on top of. So to make it a little bit more like it would be, we're going to put these on 0.50. Okay, this menu here, the wild stats of tamed dinos um, and player stats per level. This is where I would recommend changing whether you want to make the game hard or easy. If you play around with max level dinos and you put down your max level spawning wild, wild dino is only a level 80, then the max level dino you can get is only going to be 80 plus the taming levels on top of that so that's not really what's making the game difficult if you want to make it difficult then play around with your player stats here and take that down to 0.05 for a harder playthrough so you're getting half as much as the normal person or if you want a bit easier and you want double the amount of health you know double it you know put it up to 2.0 if you so wish i'm going to leave all mine at default settings but really to make something easier or harder you, you should really play around with the stats here to make a difference between easy more um easy medium and hard these are the ones that i would play around with if i was you but if you want a good reasonable game hard game just just leave these as these are as is 
Okay, now we're going to get to the advanced experience model players. We did, in General's menu, at the very start here, we applied a times 2 XP multiplier. So we've already got double the amount of XP. Now, let's say for instance, you enjoyed getting cat XP through going and leveling up your dinos, and you put a times 2 on. I mean, you can do that. But bearing in mind, for this single player game, we want to be able to defeat the Overseer. We want to get to a level 100. And in order to do that, for my playthrough, there's a lot of stuff we got to do before there. So I feel that at times 2 on an XP, I think that's as much as you need. Unless you really... You're going to you're gonna break it. You're going to over-level yourself or something if you, if you play around with the XP multiplier. So personally, I think uh, unless you've got a different agenda... Um, for your game and that's not the intention y y y you know you, uh, unless your intention is different than actually defeating the game I'd sort of leave that around times 2 on the XP and not mess around with these ones so much I'd leave them as is moving on allow custom recipes yeah we want that that's that's all good allow raid feed it doesn't matter to us because we're not having anyone else join us again um, now this is funny I checked this before and I don't know if this is a very recent update, but um, Supply Crate, by default, has been put on to 5.0. Fishing Loot Crate, that has been put 5.0. I had this set at 3.0 on Supply Crate and 5.0 on Loot Crate quality. Uh, I'm actually going to leave it as it is at the maximum. Um, I've always played with um, a mod that changed one of the first mods i shove in probably loot sense or something like that to balance it but I'm going to trust what Ark's done and leave it as it is for my player playthrough I, I'm definitely going to need some decent saddles for the dinos that I take to defeat the boss I'm going to be able to make them so I'm going to need some good loot um, so I want the I want the loot to be you know I want I want to get some good loot so and the random loot generator of Ark has always been bad um if you are playing on PC, I would certainly recommend adding loot sense. Um, but if you're just playing without it, well, like like I'm gonna have to make do without my mods. Then we'll just leave that there. Um, lastly, uh, increased uh, platform structure limit. Um, I am going to increase that to its maximum because I like building big rafts and stuff. Uh, I've already done a raft in the first episode of the completionist playthrough. Um, Go and check that out, link below, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so I don't mind, you know, it's my builds and I want to be able to build as much as I can. So, yeah, that concludes the single player setting scenario. Uh, I hope that helps. And um, also, like I say, it's running parallel to my other series games. Oh, there's I'm just trying to think, there's two other settings, see I'm looking at my notes on this, two other settings uh, that I want to change, what have I missed? Um, so show floating text, uh, I'm going to allow it in my playthrough, um, what it does is it shows you the amount of damage you've done once you hit your target, so obviously that's useful information to me as a player, but I want everybody to be able to see what sort of damage I'm doing as I'm taking out the dinosaurs and, and taming him from my playthrough. But I haven't got the crosshair enabled, so you'll see whether I miss my shot or whether I hit it in the playthrough. You'll see whether I get a headshot because basically you're going to see more points, well, unless it's a trike. In which case, guys, you don't want to be hitting in the head, you want to be hitting somewhere else. But anyway, the point is that the floating text is only going to come up after I've let the shot off and hit my target or not. So technically it's not breaking it up but it does put some numbers on the screen which can make things a bit more rpg like and less immersive in a way um however like i say for my playthrough I, i'm going to now tick that box we're going to show how much narcotic i'm putting into a dinosaur to actually take it out and you can see that on the screen um and you'll also be able to see whether i'm a good shot or whether i made a good shot or not so you know i think that information is useful and i suppose it, it can break immersion but leave that one up to you guys again with the crosshair on the screen you know that's your choice whether you have it off but it is slightly breaking the game i would recommend turning it off and the floating text thing yeah you can live without it you know but i would for my purposes as I explained, uh, that's why I'm turning it on. So, yeah, um, I just missed 
that one but um i hope my guide was of use to you guys i hope i've um explained some of the things and the reason that we're doing them and um that uh, also if you're doing a single player series like myself come down perhaps um and check out some of my other videos and support um the completion of the arc on my channel um i'd great love to see you down there and yeah we're going to be taking on all of the the bosses the brood mother the dragon i'm dreading going to fight the dragon by myself that is going to be hard but nonetheless we're going to do it and you know that'll prove to you whether the settings are going to work or they're not and they're going to make for a, a good playthrough or not so join me down there but i hope that's some help i hope i've explained some things um of course when there's special events going on like christmas and the dodo rex and this xp increase weekends and things them things still apply so you know to to your playthrough in single player so you know you've got that to um that, that will help with the special events that go on within arc that can help that can help you a lot so yeah um i think that that makes for a good balance a good balanced solo playthrough i hope that's been some help anyway i'm james this is complete games and that was my complete guide to single player settings on arc See ya.